Hi, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Wednesday, August 28th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. I'm Caitlin Moynihan. And we are joined here in the studio by Caitlin Gallo. Ooh. Guys, we've almost made it. We're almost, we're <laughs> at the middle day. of the week. Happy hump day, everybody. Hump and day. we have such a fantastic guest with us today. Yes, we have we Sa do. and Gauja, yes. who is starring in Moulin Rouge I mean, over at the Al Hirschfeld Theater. He's absolutely phenomenal in the show. We love that show around Chef's here. Kiss. We are so excited to talk to him, and we will do that in just a moment. But first, let's talk about today's top five. All right, we have been saving this one for you um, because Colleen Ballinger is wrapping up this season of Side by Side. Yes, she side is. Side by Side by Susan Blackwell. Well done. I always, I've had this. Wow. The intro. Uh, you're welcome. That. Here we are. No, yeah. I, have that, I have that song segment all the time. But yes, <laughs> Colleen Ballinger, who's currently making her Broadway debut in Waitress as Dawn, yes. she sat side by side by Susan Blackwell at Five she Napkin did. Burger, which like, is delicious. I, it is. It's yeah. really good. Can, the burgers can, are can great. She had agree. a full burger. Susan had a burger salad, whatever that is. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, they t they talked all about Colleen making her Broadway debut, being a huge viral sensation as both her alter ego, Miranda Sings, yep. millions of viewers and subscribers, but also Colleen also has a very successful channel of her own. As Absolutely. Herself. And all of those fans are coming out to yeah, see Waitress, they which is amazing. Alison Luff was just here talking about how great Colleen and Todrick's fans are. Yeah. So she told, uh, she told Susan all about her creepy doll, the time she accidentally <laughs> went to the bathroom in a fake toilet. Good times. Oh, it, it's it's yeah. truly an iconic episode. It's the season finale, and you're going to want to stay till the end of the credits for a little extra little good good over there. Absolutely. So, yeah, we're so sad to fun. see this season of Side by Side be over, but we can't wait to see what and happens more. next season. There will be more soon. There will Absolutely. be more. <laughs> All right, if you were afraid you were going to miss this world premiere, you are in luck. So, yes, if you're watching from San Diego right now and you like going to the Old Globe, <laughs> you have some extra time to go see Almost Famous. Yeah. So this is, of course, Cameron Crowe's amazing film has been turned into a musical. You've got Cameron Crowe participating. He wrote the book and he's mm -hmm. penning some of the lyrics alongside yep. Tom Kitt. Oh. Hello, Tom Kitt writing songs. A busy guy. Uh, a very, very busy, busy. Guy. <laughs> So the show begins previews on September 13th at mm -hmm. the Old Globe. It'll officially, officially open on, uh, on September 27th. And initially, you would have had to see it by October 20th, but now you have until October 27th to experience Almost Famous. Please do it on behalf of me, because yes. I can't go, and I want to hear all about it. <laughs> uh, of course, as we previously reported, the show stars Colin Donnell and mm -hmm. Soleil Pfeiffer, um, but there are so many Broadway and stage favorites in there. You have Casey Likes, recent Jimmy Award Crazy. finalist. Um, you have Drew Galing, Anika Larson, Rob Coletti, Matt Bittner, Chad Burr, Storm Lieber, and so many more. Incredible, incredible cast over there. Um, um, what else can I tell you? It's directed by Tony nominee Jeremy Herron and has feature uh, choreography by Lauren Lataro. Also very busy. Absolutely. So go check out Almost Famous. You have October until October 27th. Do it. Let us know. All right, and on the site right now, you get a chance to meet the newest London star. Yes, Jack Yarrow. A real cutie. A real cutie. He's making his yeah. professional stage debut. Mm -hmm. Incredible. As Joseph. As Joseph. And the uh, Joseph Mason Technicolor Dreamcoat that's currently playing at London's Palladium Theatre. Mm, that's right. If wow, you watched yeah. uh, London Calling with Imogen Lloyd Webber, you'd know all about it. You so would. I'm plugging yeah. that as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we did Matt Wolf, who is our British West End correspondent. correspondent. Yeah. He interviewed uh, the rising star and he kind of told us all what it's like to be making his professional stage it's debut in such an iconic deal. role. In a big show, a big deal, yeah. a big role. And yeah. I really like this quote that Jack said. He said, People say this isn't the Joseph they know and that it feels so brand new and fresh. So Amazing. Well, you've only seen Donny Osmond <laughs> do it. So Ooh, who hasn't seen Donny Osmond do it? No, he's fantastic. I wish I saw yes. Clay Aiken when Clay Aiken was That's in it on tour. That's right. I know you're also a Clay Aiken I love Clay Aiken. Yeah. But, but yeah, so we're really excited. Yeah. We're really excited for Jack Yarrow. I can't wait. He, this is just the beginning for him. Super absolutely. excited. Come on yeah. to come on to Broadway. Yeah, Let's absolutely. Go. We'll take more jo Joseph. Yeah. Always. All right, in today's Odds and Ends, we find out more information about the Judy soundtrack. I'm so excited for this movie. Ooh. Yes, this Judy Garland biopic we've been obsessing about for a while yes. now, uh, Judy. It stars Renee Zellweger, of course, as Judy Garland. Um, okay. And we're finding out more about the movie soundtrack. And uh, we, we knew Zellweger was going to be singing so many of Judy Garland's iconic classic yes. tunes. Um, but now there are some people joining her. You have four-time Grammy Award winner Sam Smith. Thank he you. will be appearing on 
Get Happy, which sounds super exciting, super into that. Um, and Grammy nominee Rufus Wainwright will be singing, and this is my favorite Judy Garland song of all time, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Come on. I'm already prepared to have my heart absolutely shattered by by this, yes, um, but definitely. can't wait. Uh, the soundtrack <laughs> so will, be, <laughs> right, will be released globally on September 27th, which is also when the movie is going to premiere in theaters. So pre-order the soundtrack. Heck yeah. Get your tickets to the movie's premiere. Get ready to celebrate Renee Zellweger all oh. over again and Judy Garland. Come on. So wonderful. So good. All right. And another one of our favorite Renees is, he's yes. like that, um, has set a couple <laughs> concert dates. Yes. Wow. Two Renees in a row. But this mm -hmm. time, Tony Award winner Renee Lise Goldsberry, who, of course, won a Tony for of course. Hamilton, but yes, also known absolutely. for many other incredible things. Mm -hmm. She is joining the iconic Cincinnati Pops Orchestra. She's doing a little ditty over at Music Hall from September 13th, 14th, and 15th. Mm -hmm. She's going to be singing some songs from her Broadway shows like of course, Rent, Rent the Lion and King. Lion King, Color Purple, Hamilton. But the concerts will also feature some songs from the Great American Songbook, some pop songs. Um, also, they're going to be doing it. a cool fe uh, tribute to Martin Luther King Jr. Right. As yes. this week is. Which is incredible. Yeah. So it's going to be really, really cool. Pops conductor John Morse Russell is going to lead the concerts. And this is, I mean, any chance to hear Renee sing, I'll take I mean, it. Yeah, so absolutely. everybody, yeah. please, you can go to the site, learn more information about how to get tickets and more information about the concerts. But yeah, go Renee. Absolutely. Sing your heart out whenever you want. And all of this information and tickets to these things and schedules and all of that can be found on the site right now, of course. But stay right where you are. Don't click away because we're about to talk to Sa. Oh. So, Caitlin, would you please tell us a little bit about today's guest? I would love to. Um, Sa Nagalja is wowing audiences as Toulouse Lautrec in the new Broadway hit Moulin Rouge. He earned a Tony nomination for his leading turn in Fela, and his resume includes screen credits in Luke Cage, The Accidental Wolf, mm -hmm. Last Resort, and more. You can follow him on social media as well as the show. Um, please leave all of your questions and comments below, and please welcome Sa and Ryan. Sa, I'm so excited. Thank you. This is all the applause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm so excited to chat with you. We are huge, huge fans of yours and of Moulin Rouge around here. Um, we're obsessed with it. How are things going on over at the Al Hirschfeld Theater? How does it feel to be a part of this musical that everybody is talking about? This is the big show here right now. Yeah, it's um, things are going great. Yeah, Al Hirschfeld. Um, it's yeah, the audiences are really amazing, uh, very enthusiastic, mm -hmm. and the team of people working on Moulin Rouge are absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I like to characterize them as a bunch of green berets. Okay. Uh, because everyone is really, really good at what they do. And the overall vibe and climate there is just. Yeah. Well, that's. Uh, yeah, you have creative geniuses working. I mean, between Baz Luhrmann, Alex Timbers, Sonia Taye, Derek McLean, Justin Levine, the people, John Logan, the people that helped pull this all together right. are just the people at the top of their game. Exactly. And so, how does it. How is it working with all of these yeah. geniuses? And, and that's just the creative team. Right. Then exactly. there's the yeah. ensemble and the cast. <laughs> totally, you know, like yeah. it's. It's yeah. amazing, and um, you know, it's it's been it's been a treat, uh, to work with the creative team. Uh, you know, obviously the show is packed full of brilliance, um, and uh, the height of craftsmanship. Thus, uh, it's just an absolutely wonderful and dynamic experience. You yeah, know? And, and, it, and it carries on. It is for audiences too. Tell, when you first um, when you first heard about this, were yeah. you familiar with the film before? Yeah, had you seen the film before you learned about this? Yes. Yeah, I saw the film when it came out. Okay. I guess what, twenty years ago. I, I loved it. I mean, obviously, well, you know, before that was Romeo and Juliet, and that was my introduction to Baz's work. Yeah, ditto. Yeah. And that was kind of what I found it breathtaking. It was yeah, like me too. Really amazing. <laughs> right. um, and so then to to see this happen. Um, one of the things about Moulin Rouge, uh, I mean, people can watch it now, but when it came out, you know, MTV was still a thing. Yeah, You know, yeah. where you could watch music videos. I mean, MTV is still a thing, but it's more like reality shows Right, now. yes, yeah. And so, like, his was one of the few at that time, or on that level, to make a film that captured the essence of a music video, mm -hmm. you know, with the types yeah. of edits and cuts and... 
you know, the way things were staged. So it was very, um, in, uh, very impressionable. Yeah, right. Yeah. When you really, first, really so when you first came in contact with the, the, this musical version, did you, um, what did you think? Like, did you know, oh, this, this could be amazing? Did you, did you have any um, concerns about, you know, because we live in a world where a lot of these things that we love get adapted and some are more successful than others, but this, you know, is just, it's a whole new thing. Yeah, well, you know, I, I went into it, um, I didn't really make any uh, pre-ideas around it. Yeah. No, I just said, you know, let's get in the room. I mean, it was early enough in the process also to where, I mean, this was at least two years ago, you yeah. know, maybe, yeah. maybe a little more. So, you know, Broadway was down the road, even though it was clear, like, the show is going to go. <laughs> right, but, right. you know, what is it going to be about? So yeah. And th that is... I mean, that is the point of the process, to, to get in, see what's on the page, and see what needs to be developed, in, and, and offer input mm -hmm. to help bring it to life. And right. So for me, I didn't uh, presume that I would be with it from the point that I started until now. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't presume that it would be great, <laughs> right, but right. I, 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 just, <laughs> I just was happy to agree to a contract of helping create something, and let's find out where it's going yeah. to go. And it yeah. is. It is. It's something else. You play uh, You play Toulouse, of course, one of my favorite characters from the film, but there have been so many, uh, there have been some great changes made with this character. Uh, one of the things that I noticed is that there's there seems to be this whole backstory between Toulouse and Santine that mm. we kind of get glimpses of, like there, there's a friendship, there's a relationship that th is there. Um, what was it like working with, you have the amazing Karen Olivo in your, yeah. what was it like working with her and building that sort of backstory between these two? Yeah. Uh, um, well, th that's been a wonderful process. Uh, uh, Karen and I are actually, we're still growing what that is, mm. too. You know, I mean, there is, you know, what John Logan put on the page and uh, the way that that has evolved over the last couple of years. Um, there, there were periods when there was a lot more text uh, in general, sure. through, or, you know, throughout the entire script. And, and there was a lot more backstory on Satine. Uh, being uh, disseminated uh, through Toulouse. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I mean, you know, we've cut this show down to, uh, you know, a, a, a nice uh, sure. size. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, but in that, um, so Karen and I, what we try to do in these very quick moments, you know, and sometimes, I mean, it's just really fast, like how to uh, project um, that feeling of a very old, close relationship yeah, that yeah. still exists even at a distance mm -hmm. that if your eyes are open you can say oh wow they must know each other <laughs> exactly <a> <laughs> no, you know exactly it. yeah yeah so we, we were always trying to find more ways to 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 sharpen that way that the audience can catch it quickly it's fantastic and i think to lose kind of is the he's like the um like the moral compass, I feel like sometimes of the show. You know, he has all mm. these bohemian values, and you know, he's rooting for these lovers and standing up for himself and art. Is there what? What? Mm. Did, what do you admire most about Toulouse? What have you? Has he taught you anything in the time that you've been playing him? Mm. Uh, that's a great question. You know, I'm still reading his um, biography, and every time I turn the page. Uh, there are more fascinating things coming out. I bet. Just uh, about, you know, just him and uh, his his time. Uh, and John has done a great job of, of capturing the spirit of Toulouse for this context, you know, mm -hmm. of, of, you know, of this, this storytelling. Um, well, one of the things I really appreciate about uh, who Toulouse was... Uh, granted, I mean, he is a human being, a very complex life. Uh, so there are more there are more things about him than can be captured. Sure, in, yeah. You know, unless someone's going to make a biopic about him on stage or screen, which wouldn't be a bad idea. But no, I think that's a great you know, idea. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, well, there are many things I can say about Toulouse. One of the things I appreciate about him in particular is how he was daring enough to take uh, in all of the things that he studied formally mm -hmm. um, uh, as, a, as an artist, as a painter, and uh, find a space for himself 
to explore it in like the Art Nouveau context, which was happening in, sure, in yeah. Paris at that time, France at that time, um, to to not put boundaries on his creative exploration or expression, mm -hmm. you know. And I think uh, the way that we deal with the Bohemian ideals, freedom, beauty, truth, love, in this piece, uh, it, it it speaks to the heart of where that kind of spirit of exploration yeah. lies in, in, in so many artists and artisans, uh, not just within the creative fields, but in others as well. You Absolutely. Know? People who are yeah. willing to explore and go, you know, push beyond the box. Absolutely. And, the and it, for you, as I mean, and you're such a, an incredibly creative person beyond just acting. I mean, you do so much. Is there, is, is it more fun when you're able to sort of play an artist? And I mean, when you look at the set of the, what the theater has been transformed into with this show, I mean, it's just the, the colors and the music and everything. I mean, it's just such a experience top to bottom. Is it, is it fun for you to be able to show up to a place and your, your work be particularly portraying these artists and singing these songs and being able to live in this amazing world. Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, it is a lot of fun <laughs> showing up to work in general uh, and working on this piece in particular right. as well and, and with this team of people. It is a playground and um, the way it's designed, the way the piece is designed, at least for my track, uh, it's, you know, it's like shooting a film every day but really? shooting all the scenes in one day <laughs> you know what i mean right yeah no absolutely wherein if you're on set for a particular uh you know today we're going to do that one scene where you know it's oh mm -hmm. you know or you know we're going to do the when you guys first meet and it's a big party <laughs> right, today right. You know, but no, we're going to do that every day. We're going to do space for two hours and you just drop in, you know, fast, advance the world to that particular moment and get out of there. Um, and it is a roller coaster, you know, as opposed to like with Fela, stand on stage the entire yeah. show and we're going to take the long arc together. Right. You know, and this one is like, okay, hold it and give it and then walk away. And two weeks later, Give that, you know. It's certainly, so, yeah, it's certainly. wonderful. I want to ask about Fela. We're coming. It's a, it'll be about ten years, you know, since since you were doing Fela. What mm -hmm. when you think back on that experience? What um, what stands out to you? Was it you know? Because it was, I'm sure, such an important moment in your career in mm -hmm. your life. What what do you reflect on now when you think back on Fela? Because you, I mean, it, Broadway and tour and come, came back to Broadway in London. I mean, you, responsible for its whole journey. Yeah, hmm. Yeah, there's a lot there, a lot to contemplate, unpack, consider. But I guess, hmm. yeah, where, where to begin? Okay, so one thing about that experience that to this day really feels interesting, good, curious, um, continue unfolding, is the presence of Fela Kuti mm -hmm. in the world yeah. since then. You know, it's it's quite, well, it's fascinating to be a part of something that creates awareness around something real. You know, it's, sure. it's yeah, I mean, that that's just something in and of itself. Uh, I mean, it's its own sort of thing. But like Fela's music, Afrobeat, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I believe this show had something to do with with this oh, 10 certainly. years ago coming yeah. into people's consciousness. But then, um, you know, there was a burgeoning sound coming out of Nigeria at that time, 10 years ago, that didn't have a name yet. And Fela was, you know, there was this resurgence. People who love Fela always loved Fela. They never stopped. People certainly. learning Fela, that's another thing. <laughs> right, yeah. You know? And so then the young chaps were like, well, why don't we just call this sound Afro Beats? Which is a thing now, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's made yeah. it way out of Africa into the London scene, into the U.S. market. Um, but all of that is still a part of that same bubbling over that happened, you know. Yeah. 
when we were working on the Fela gig, you know, like, and the Wintour becoming interested, putting that in vogue. Mm -hmm. Then we start seeing fashion houses, like, <laughs> right. you know, making the African pattern on the, right. uh, yeah. you know, uh, 34th and all Street of that in the window of Macy's. Yeah, yeah and, it's, right. and it's just carried on and grown into its own thing. Far beyond what, I mean, none of that was happening before we started doing the show. No, right, yeah. So that's one of the things to me that's like, wow. I bet. You know? I bet. Absolutely. I want to open up. I know we have a lot of people watching that want to ask you questions as well. Caitlin, what would some of our viewers like yep. to know? We have Sarah? time for a couple questions. Um, Alex says he can't wait to hear the cast album on Friday. Um, yes. And a great question is, what is there a song that you're um, most excited to hear from it? A song that I'm most excited to hear yeah. from the cast album? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm interested to hear how Nature Boy turned out. Yeah. That was an interesting, um, that was an interesting process. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I want to hear how that song came out. <laughs> Me too, um, yeah. And, you know, w working on the album was really cool yeah, as well. You know, us. Boz was in the studio. Oh, he wow. was on the comm, uh, also giving us, uh, you know, things to do, to try. Uh, and yeah, I can also say like, um, Baz's presence there and the types of things that they were pulling out of me and what I observed from my colleagues, um, there is like a, an audio cinematic, um, quality to the things that we were being asked to do and, and the approach. So I'm quite curious to hear how that all comes out. You know, like, actually I was in an interview with Karen and Aaron earlier today where we were discussing this thing in particular where... In a lot of cast albums, you know, there's that sense of let's capture what you did on stage mm -hmm. into the microphone. Right. You know, mm -hmm. do that. Yep. Whereas this one was let's capture the feeling that is on stage, but let's recontextualize it so that when you have your headphones on, you know, yeah. You you experience the intimacy that we are trying to communicate in those scenes, as opposed to like, that's how it sounded when I was sitting in the seats and they were you know right, you know right. forty yards away, you know you know belting it out. It's more about you know bringing it, you know. Close. So I'm, I'm quite curious to see how all of it comes yeah. out, really. We can't wait. I know. I'm so excited now. <laughs> yeah. I, I just rebought a copy. Um, uh, we have time for one more. Oh, I like this one. Amanda asked, um, acting as the director of the show within the show, are there any characteristics you took from Alex Timbers or any of the directors that you've worked with <laughs> that you incorporate into the part of your character? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> well, um, I, I first like to say working uh, with Alex as a, a director is really wonderful. And Alex's style of directing is like no other. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he has ways of getting things out of of actors that, uh, you know, it almost seems effortless, you know, it's sometimes in the way that he, um, he directs people. So uh, if anything, um, the kind of flavors that Toulouse-Lautrec is giving in this show within the show version, if anything, it's more a contrast, you know, it's more of a, um, kind of like the opposite of anything <laughs> anti -Alex you see <laughs> Alex do. <laughs> right. uh, but um, I, I, I do watch a, a lot of um, Charlie Chaplin um, mm. on repeat, uh, like every single day uh, in my dressing room. And, you know, because for me it's about also, you know, like the more we can give flavors and qualitative um Aesthetics that bring people's minds, even if they don't know why, into the time and space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that this piece is meant to be taking place in, I think it helps the storytelling. And so I'm constantly trying to give more of those sorts of things. And I think that juxtaposition against the modern music is a part of what made the film so fascinating Absolutely. as well, you know? Yeah. And it's a fine line, you know, between you know trying to do that and the opposite at the same time. And the show within the show 
is one of our easiest moments to kind of play with that. With yeah, the, with that mm -hmm. and you have a blast up there. You can tell it's so yeah. much. Yeah, it's so much. Well, all of that hard work has paid off. It's an absolutely phenomenal show. You, it sir, is. are absolutely incredible at, in it, as are that whole cast. Make sure you go see Moulin Rouge at the Al Hirschfeld Theater as soon as possible. Thank you so much, sir. My Such pleasure. a pleasure chatting pleasure. with you. Thank you so much for coming see you in. All soon. <laughs> Caitlin, would you uh, take us out, please? Yep. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Live at Five. You can catch us here every single day live at 5 p.m. on Facebook. Um, tune in tomorrow as we are chatting with the newest star of Dear Van Hansen, Gabrielle Karuba.